Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video, I would like to take a look at the moon base possibilities and also what we could fling over to Mars in order to support our crewed mission there eventually because of course those are the big ticket items. And so it's been a little bit since I posted a video in the series and I'm not entirely sure what I was thinking I was going to be doing in this video. But, you know, that's always up to how I feel that day anyway. And today I would like to take a look at this launch a new base to the moon. I have changed the contract, though this isn't in the package in the RP2000 zip yet. I'll see how it works out. But uh, I changed it from four Kerbals to six Kerbals because four Kerbals is sort of trivially easy because the Lynx spacecraft can carry four Kerbals. So I said six, but it's still sort of easy anyway, as we'll soon see. Uh, but... Anyway, that gives a lot of money, but uh, we have four years to do it, which is plenty of time, really. But it takes a lot of time to build our rockets. One thing we don't really want to do is immediately pick up the milestone contract for sending crew to Mars. Uh, that's lucrative as well. Well, okay, it's 10 years, though. Crew at least three. I was hoping for two. But... Uh, yeah, we have to send them there and bring them back, but we do not have to land them. Landing on Mars is separate. So we just need to do a crewed Mars flyby. In this case, it would probably be getting them into orbit. And what I want to do is send the supplies first. So we won't pick up that contract yet. First, I'm going to send some supplies and make sure that the supply vessel is about the size that we're going to have the crew go on as well. And... Aside from that, also do this base on the moon. I'm probably not going to change the base on Mars. Um, I don't know. I'll think about that. That's a lot of money, let's face it. That's a lot of money. I really should make these com uh, contracts a little bit more complicated if I knew how. Like, uh, maybe we should make sure you have crew on them. I'll think about that. You guys can tell me what you think. Uh, I mean... Landing on, uh, a, you know, one person on Mars or the moon is one thing, and then landing something to support six Kerbals or even four Kerbals on Mars is a different thing, a uh, much more complicated thing. There's also a crude Venus flyby, which is very lucrative too. When you think about it, these would be very lucrative. I mean, uh, the baseline for this is that one fund is $1,000 in year $2,000. So we're really, we're getting about... Uh, three billion dollars advance and two billion completion. It'd be a miracle if we could pull off this something like this uh, with that kind of money. Of course, that part of that is because we're not paying really for the upkeep of facilities and stuff like that. And it does take a while to build our rockets. If, let's take a look at the rockets here. But our rockets are currently priced at like three hundred million. So maybe a factor of ten over what uh, what we've got there. Maybe, but still. It's it's all pretty reasonable. So, moon base. Yeah, I already worked on it a little bit off camera. And, well, here's the thing. I mean, even if I make it six Kerbals, it ends up being like this. <laughs> I end up using the uh, two of the Lynx S Neos, the ones that carry three. Uh, just having one upside down. But, I mean, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Because I could have just used the Mark I crew cabin. Unlike RP-1, which has some fancy doodads on to stop you from doing that because of pressurization and all that, uh, RP-2000 is simple. It's based on the old RP-0, which didn't stop you from doing that. And so the really cheaty way to do it would be like having two of these, which would just be a mere four tons, and you'd have a crew capacity of eight. So yeah, that's, that's a possibility. But uh, I, I chose to be not good about it. I, I chose to be better about it. Uh, there is also the habitation modules. That uh, ha habitation module that's six tons, crew capacity of four. We could have two of those. The unlock cost is unattractive after I've unlocked these. But they're giving a lot of money, so it's uh, there's a good case for it. I would like to land this at a particular location on the moon this time, though, uh, where the resources were. So... That's one thing that we need to think about. And then I'll be landing other modules on it too. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, that's fine. We've got supplementary RCS thrusters here, solar panels, which are boxed up like that, and they're like that, and there's two more on the other side. Uh, we call this ship, which is really obvious. And then currently just one engine, and that's just for landing, right? It's not gonna take off again, it's a base. 
Uh, it's got 1,328 for the final bit of landing, and this engine does throttle very well. It's an upgraded version of the Meflox engine we had used before, and this one throttles down to 20%. So that's nice, 40 ignitions, 344 vacuum ISP for Methalox, which is not unreasonable, I hope. And these have the MLI layers and all. And then, uh, yeah, so that's there. We've got a ladder, but I should probably bring that up for now. Um, we may or may not have Kerbals go in here. It's not got a whole lot of supplies. And I forget if I have uh, the Simple Logistics mod in here. I would like the Simple Logistics mod. Okay, I'll probably want to have the Simple Logistics mod for when we actually deliver Kerbals to stay on the moon. Uh, because we'll probably have our other supplies in a separate module and we'll just expect the modules to be able to share supplies. Right now we are not doing that. So uh, that is the launch for the moon base and that's what the moon base looks like. It's not got a lot of Delta V on its own so this stage is going to have to make orbit for it and also start the descent and then this will crash into the surface. That is the plan anyway. We'll send it uncrewed. Actually, it specifies that in the contract. I mean, NASA's not going to send a moon base crewed like that. Well, okay, if they're using Starship, I guess, if it counts as the moon base. But generally speaking, that was not the idea. The lander would land separately, and then people would go from the lander into the moon base. But uh, I guess landing them in a base was a possibility. Anyway, so I guess I'm going to build one of these. It's expensive, right? 342000 here. And it's not that heavy, 1372 So we're talking about a rocket uh, Falcon Heavy-ish, uh, less than Falcon Heavy, though, with the more efficient propellants. So that's the scale of the thing we're talking about for what I've said is $342 million. All right, well, okay, so we're building this. Now, the supply mission for Mars. Well, this will take the full Buzz rocket, four boosters, and even then it might be tricky, so more like 2,000 tons there. And I've separated it out. It used to be that you could get your supplies uh, in a neat way by using one of the old procedural tanks, but I tried it this time, one of these guys. I tried it this time, and the uh, life support option didn't seem to work right. So maybe they've stopped us from doing that. See the life support here? Uh, it used to put the food, water, and oxygen in the proper ratios, but now it only puts clean water, so I don't know what's happened to it. That used to be very convenient. But it was probably cheaty in terms of dry mass, because if you take a look at the food module here, which does assume that they have to walk inside, I suppose, uh, the dry mass is 3.66 tons, and then the wet mass is 6.11, so we're not really carrying that much food uh, and it's a lot of mass, but it, it's certainly better to have that be separate because what it is is the service module tank because the other tanks can't carry food. Since the other tanks can carry water, it's better to have the isogrid structure one be the water tank, and so that's what I have here. Then the dry mass isn't so bad, and water is actually heavier than the food. And then uh, we have the uh, high pressure tank for the oxygen because uh, since it's not liquid oxygen, it's the oxygen gas that needs to be in a high pressure tank. So that's a little bit heavier, but not too bad. The food is really the one that has the worst dry mass part. And, you know, that's something we're just gonna have to bite because that's the least capable thing that we can recycle, right? Everything else is easier to recycle or find in C2 or stuff like that. The food is the hardest thing to try to grow uh, in C2 or deal with, so yeah, that's going to be rough. Uh, hopefully eventually we'll get some recyclers for the water and oxygen, we'll see. So for now, I put them in the little separate tanks that are color-coded like that, and uh, it's sort of reminiscent of the attack light support tanks, not really, they have nicer logos. And then a propulsion module to get it into orbit around Mars, and that module has uh, three hypergolic engines, and it provides 2,447 meters per second. So whether that's enough to capture around Mars depends on the opportunity and exactly how our trajectory goes. But 
this this whole thing is about 40 tons. Let's say no, let's just be clear about it. 39 tons. Let's say it like that. And I'm going to see whether the Buzz rocket can get that 39 tons over to the moon. And then that'll inform us about the, not the moon, Mars to Mars. And that'll inform us about the limits of the crewed mission to Mars. Whether this works out or not. At least in this case, the payload is cheaper. If we send a uh, crewed module, those are much more expensive, of course. Uh, a bunch of tanks full of food, water, and oxygen? Not a problem. Let's not talk about whether the food would rot. Uh, they have. F I don't think they've thought about that yet, thankfully. Uh, this is quicker to build because, uh, I guess, because it doesn't have the crew capsules and we have two of them on the other one. So that's great, but that doesn't help anything because the Mars window is a ways away. So we'll be building the moon, run, moon rocket first. Okay, so that's how it is. 336 for the moon base and then 493. Could be that both of these things just end tragically, right? So that's why I'm not... I'm not risking unlocking too much stuff or making it too expensive. However, at this point I will t uh, pick up the contract for the moon base, I think. I mean, we're in the process of building. Maybe I'll wait until we've built it. So my normal Mars plan is generally to send supplies and landers separately from the Kerbals. And then the Kerbals will be in the vehicle that can also come back. Very important. And then they'll meet up with supplies there and also the lander if they're supposed to land. And that's usually how I go. And mostly, if I can swing it, I'll use propulsion, uh, propulsive capture around Mars. I'm trying to use the aero braking or aero capture. Well, that always takes more testing and trying out what altitudes would be best. And, you know, I could do that in sandbox. I, I probably should do it in sandbox. And I'll think about that. But for now, the, we'll try with the supply module, since it needs propulsion anyway, to bring it in propulsively instead of use the heat shield. So, anyway, high-powered electrics. Well, I should have put those these kinds of solar panels on the modules, but we'll hold off on that for now. The panels that I put should be fine, hopefully. Okay, with like a week before it's finished being built, let me take the contract. Okay, now we're on the hook. Okay, it has been built. Let us launch without any Kerbals. That does pose a risk though as far as communications. We will have to be cautious. Just barely a dawn launch here. Alright, SAS on, throttle up, and... Ignition. And launch. And up it goes, the buzz medium with our moon base, our first moon base. We had scanned the moon for ore, and we're going to try to land it in a place with ore, and potentially other resources that USI can use. Alright, we should be through max Q. Okay, and booster set. Well, ignition failure on one of the separatrons, apparently. Test light warning us that it is not letting up here. Alright, uh, fairings. Ooh, that could have been bad. Maybe I should just wait until... Well, I mean, it's inefficient, though. Alright, I may have overdone it a little bit on the time to apoapsis and ignition. Well, we are going to have a lot to do with this stage. This burn, transfer, capture around the moon, and then the start of landing. All of that. Well, it's got 7,300, so... Well, and it's got... 10 ignitions altogether, 9 now. Alright, we are in orbit. 
We have three, uh, 6,400 meters per second lift and a decent inclination to the moon. And it's paused as it's saving. And so we can try to get to the moon. All right, direction around the moon probably doesn't matter, but we probably want more inclination, though that'll be easier to, ter to determine when we get there. No, probably at a mid-course correction anyway. This is not too bad, though. And it's not too bad. But if we take a look at the moon, no, the moon, and we want the resources, let's just focus on ore. There was some patch that I was really interested in. It really depends on which area is lit. <laughs> we don't want to have to deal with that problem. And certainly we want it to be facing Earth or comms because we have nobody on this. I think this was the patch, but that's going to be tough for comms, I think. The highest cutoff area for ore is this bit. I think that's what we're, uh, that's where we should go. So if we come in with this inclination, should be able to, should be able to do that. So that'll be the plan. I want the maximum ore possibility, I think. That's my, my theory. 87 tons in orbit, by the way, for our buzz medium. Well, don't feel like taking any chances. We've got that line to Kano there, but... Hmm. Well, we should pick up that one there, Johannesburg. Here's hoping. <laughs> okay. It's a long-ish burn. Not, not that long, really. 4 minutes and 29 seconds. Not the worst TLI burn I've ever done. Okay, go. We have two engines. Okay, and oop, I, I missed it. I missed it. Uh, oh, well, let's, yeah, let's just go retrograde a bit. Could go around that way, that that would be fine too, I guess, but... Well, I guess now it's, we've got a periapsis there. It's probably okay. Though, that'll be out of comms. This has more likelihood to be in comms, so I think I want to switch it to this side. Well, as I correct this, we have 3,283 left. So that's definitely enough for capture around the moon and then landing, assuming that not too much of it boils off. All right, that seems fine to me. Let's get the solar panels out and then head over there. Did I not get enough solar? Uh, two cabins might be quite a lot. And then there's the night time of the moon, which would be a problem. Well, we're recharging, but it's not great. Well, anyway, on we go. We're still alive. Oh, whoa, 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 suddenly... Oh, Earth is blocking the sun. Great. All right, we have entered Lunar SOI, but I haven't recovered the charge that I lost when the Earth covered the sun, unfortunately. And part of that, I mean, you know, time warp is a bit of an issue. I can't time warp any faster than this or it doesn't recharge. And that's the case being a stellar thing that I don't quite understand. But anyway, we'll work with this. I'll keep it high. It's at 160 kilometers right now on the periapsis, but I feel like that'll give us comms for a little bit longer, so we'll keep it like that for now. Well, we'll have to deploy one of those reactors over to the moon. I had the Topaz reactors. And we might need one.
It's practically a best use for those sorts of things. Well, the burn won't take long. Uh, well, I'm not quite halfway recharged now. And ignition. Okay, okay, 184 by 57.8. So that's okay. Now we might still have to tilt our orbit a little bit to get to where we want it to go. Or wait a long time. Waiting a long time is not a good idea. But it's there now. That's not great. Do these things have hibernate at all? Well, hibernate and warp auto. I guess we can try to do that. It's not like there's anybody inside right now. Should be in low power mode. Maybe that'll be okay. Okay, I think with that hibernate and warp bill net net recharge. And I'll let it fully recharge and I'm going to go to the tracking station. And we're going to wait until that location is under our orbit. Okay, that's the plan. We'll see about boil off as well. Could be a while. It could be a whole month. No, oh, or at least a big chunk of a month. But our mission is uh, under construction, our mission to Mars with the supplies. With the cost of everything, as far as building a whole lot of stuff in tandem, it's tough. But we do have extra money. I really do need to be a little bit more liberal with that sort of deal. It's too bad this self full patch is so hard to access with communications to the Earth. Of course, that's where they would be more likely to aim for. Uh, that's not going to have Earth comms without a whole lot of support from the other satellites around. Well, the desired area is coming into alignment, but it's going to be in the dark. We want to wait until it's over here. So I'll wait. Okay, now it's coming into daylight. I don't want to miss too much of it. We'll try to land here, right on the Terminator. Alright, here we go. Well, I'm going to make a little marker for myself. Sea of Serenity. Let's see, right about... No, there ish. Hopefully, that'll be okay. But yeah, we'll need a better power situation for the nighttime side of the moon. And I should have put bigger solar panels on this. Should we just land very, very forcefully now? Instead of waiting one orbit. I mean, we're in line with it. Of course, it's completely arbitrary, but... Well, uh, instead of pointing that way, how about retrograde then? We haven't unlocked, you know, drilling units or anything like that for the ore. It's an interesting purple hue on those. So we're establishing a base, but we can't really take advantage of the ore just yet. Okay, initiating the coming straight down on maneuver. Oh, the purple hue is because we've got the the ore visible here. You can see it on the ground there. All right. Okay, ignition. Well, somewhere around here with the purpleness on the ground, we'll be fine. We're really high up. This is not efficient, but we sort of want to dump this stage anyway. No lowlands, no midlands, none of that. I want to 
a proper named location. Sea of Tranquility, not quite. Not going for the Sea of Tranquility. Serenity is a close neighbor of the Sea of Tranquility. Okay, well, I'll take one more burn out of this as we get closer. Okay, last little burst with this stage. Okay, and dumping it. Okay, that has started. Here down. I don't really care about the specifics of the location. 4.4 kilometers is close enough for this purpose. Well, plenty extra here. We could have carried more. Probably more supplies would have been good. And the stage explodes. Ah, uh, the sun is sort of setting on us. Oh, there's still a bit there. Eh, well, and more bits now. It'll be disposed of. Oop, oh, oop, oh, 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 don't go, don't go up this side here. Ah. Oh, 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 stay down, stay down, stay down, stop firing all those thrusters. We had a lot of them, but they do not all need to fire right now. Okay, extend ladder, just in case somebody wants to eventually get in. Uh, well, the power situation, not great. And, well, let's see, in time warp, right now I don't think it's getting any sunlight, so let's wait a little bit. Until this location does finally get above the horizon. Okay, so because of the hibernation, it's fine, but if we really wanted to put Kerbals in, we should probably send a reactor for the nighttime side, or they could just stay here when... or they could just occupy the top one uh, while the bottom one's still in hibernation, and then that'll be fine as long as they're not staying during the night. Something like that. Okay, well, that is done. Does it think it's done? It thinks it's done. Okay, so it is in agreement. Back to Space Center. This is all about getting the funds. I, I never intended for RP2000 to be super restrictive. The goal is to get funds so that we can do what we want on the moon or Mars or stuff like that. So now that we've proved ourselves in a way, uh, they have given us funds so that we can build a more impressive base. Well, at least after we do all the science that we need to unlock the parts that we want. So that is the goal. But right now the supply module is going to finish in 46 days and the window is in 311. So I need to think of something else to build uh, to uh, sort of occupy our build slot. So we have so much money now. We have 6.7 million. I need to come up with something more impressive. I think uh, one thing we should do is speed up everything uh, and Research. Now we. Oh well, you know. Actually, what we need to do is we need to upgrade this. Four million. Ah. Uh, well. Okay. Hold on. Do we need need that? Five hundred is the limit right now. Yeah. Well, short term habitation is five fifty. So this all this tech here we can't unlock until we spend money on that. So maybe we don't have as much money as we I thought. I think I'm going to queue that up. Well, EVAs can collect surface. Well, like EVAs can already collect surface samples, and resource transfer is already available. Yeah. All right. So yeah, not as rich. And as far as science is concerned, we could certainly do with collecting more of that. So next time I'll launch the supply module, but I really do need to think of something else that we can build probably maybe something else for Mars 
because um, we're not un it's gonna be a bit until we can unlock the modules that I want for the moon the USI modules which are like these these are the those kinds they come with recycling units so that's one of the benefits but that's a pretty high science there anyway I will think about that but sorry for just having one launch but I also introduced a few things so with that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.